Tell them you heard it on Power 108.9. Hey, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's the first episode of Chocolate Tangerine of 2020 season. Listen, let me tell you. I'm so excited. Can you hear it in my voice? Can you hear it? We cover all things cannabis culture and commerce on this channel. So if this is something that you're interested in, make sure you share this out right now. Okay? We are going live right now. Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. I can't wait for y'all to hear who I got in the building tonight. Because you know I come through with the best of the best guests on Power 108.9. Period. Period. Okay? So... Make sure you keep it locked right here because we have an amazing show for you guys. And we'll be right back on Power 108.9. And we're back on Chocolate Sangerine on Power 108.9. You guys, we cover all things cannabis, culture, and commerce. And we give it to you sweet and juicy every single time. So make sure you share this out if this is something that you're interested in. So my guest, my first guest of 2020, right? Our season two of Chocolate Sangerine is Courtney Aura Freeman. And we're going to get to know her. How you doing, first of all? How you feeling? It's fabulous to be here. It's fabulous to be here. I love her already, guys. <laughs> Listen, Bio says you're a second generation cannabis industry entrepreneur. Let's talk about that. Let's unfold that. Please. I want to know who, who was it mama them? Was it daddy? Who was it? Both, both my parents. Yeah. Oh. They started a company, a uh, rolling paper company. It was a, it was called heart and soul, which is really sweet. But uh, yeah, they started a rolling paper company in the seventies called white Buffalo. And it's been on the shelves ever since it was on the shelves for 35 plus years. And they licensed out a trademark to a competitor. The competitor did not take their product off the shelves. And uh, most recently the trademark license expired and I, I was thinking about starting my own company and so I said well dad maybe we should consider doing what this was always intended to do and and start cannabis products with it <clears throat> so um, that's the journey that I I started on a few years back and uh, now we have multiple products in the CBD vertical with White Buffalo Spirit our e-commerce site I do business consulting and support businesses and bringing products to market licensing dealing with the taxes and things like that you know the boring um, stuff go to, go to market strategy and then um, we also produce events I've been producing events in the cannabis space since 2015 my background is in event production uh, uh, one of the areas of my expertise and uh, I did uh, Tropical Film Festival in New York and MTV Music Awards in Miami and uh, there's just a, a real need for us to build community in the cannabis space that's my primary interest and that's going to help us to kind of transcend some of the difficulties that we encounter in working with cannabis and legality and the black market, as you said, safe access for patients, safe access for me and you. <laughs> and uh, that's that's what I'm working on. That's what's happening right now. That is awesome. So I saw one of your last events that you were putting on. We were <clears throat> supposed to connect a few weeks ago, but you were in Vegas for the Women in Cannabis. Was that what it was? It was it was MJ BizCon, yep, one of the I world's largest that. conventions in the cannabis space. Space. Absolutely. And we produced the third annual Women Wednesday, which is uh, it's the the genesis is is uh, women empowered in cannabis, a closed Facebook group of over 8,000 uh, women in cannabis and CBD. And then we partnered with Tokativity. So combined, it was a it was a network of 44,000 women in cannabis represented at this event. We had hundreds of women that came to our mansion. And let me just tell you, just, you know, just for all of you listening, it is not easy to produce a cannabis event at a mansion in Vegas. We started about six months ago. We had a lot of difficulty um, navigating not only the Airbnb guidelines for Nevada and, and Las Vegas, but then once you get past that, if you do find a place, is it 420 friendly? Right? Absolutely. So um, for us, it's so rare, especially <clears throat> in California with licensing the way it is, to be able to hold a cannabis consumption event. And so it's really important for us, especially as women, to come together and be able to consume and build community and bond. So uh, one of our uh, one of our partners. Uh, Verdant Leaf out of Oregon, um, she found us a mansion at the very last minute. So uh, we had about three weeks. We brought in over $5,000 to make it happen, cover the mansion. And then uh, we parted like it was 1999. Yes, it was awesome. 